Lisa from Soul to Soul Yoga. I'm going to do a short um, tutorial on how to do Chaturanga Dandasana or four limb staff pose, which is um, quite a challenging arm strengthening pose that's done in many flow classes. Um, it can be difficult when you first start yoga, I'd say it's better to learn the proper technique and do um, a modified version until you build strength rather than doing too many of these when you first start class you could become discouraged and think oh I'm weak and oh it's not pleasurable because they are hard so I always say to people do a modified version build strength and you'll soon be able to start doing this the reason we're these are so challenging is we don't do a lot of arm strengthening most of us in our daily lives so unless you do a lot of press-ups or you're a gymnast chances are you don't do a lot of balancing on your arm so you might feel it quite a lot in your wrists when you start yoga you might find it's really strong on your shoulders so important to build strength slowly the body doesn't respond well to overworking better to do a consistent practice a little and often you'll soon start to build the strength and then everything starts to become easier and your practice becomes pleasurable which is what it should be really so the first thing I'm going to say is pick your yoga class if you've got a lot of injuries or you're older or you're um, you're looking for something gentler maybe don't go to a flow or a vinyasa class that's not to say you can't do it with modifications some of my students who've been with me for years have perhaps started thinking oh I'm, I'm not strong and now they're you know doing stuff they never thought they'd be able to do so don't be limited but also maybe talk to make definitely talk to your yoga teacher about what style might be best for you to start with because there's lots of different ones so the first thing I'm going to say about Chaturanga Dandasana is I'll, sh I'll show you all the way through first. This is the full version, the most um, challenging version. So it's strong. So we start in a plank position and we bend the arms backwards. So it's not out to the side like a press up position. The arms go back towards the body. We hover if we can and then we pull ourselves through in a vinyasa or a sun salutation to an up dog, which is again a difficult um, one to start with so I'll show you some variations and then we lift back to a downward dog okay so that's just a traditional flow class like an ashtanga or a vinyasa or a flow class or even a traditional hatha class would often have um, a chaturanga or some version of that in the sun salutations so the first thing we need to start with if you're going for the full version is the arm position so we want to have our wrists elbows and shoulders in one line if possible spreading the fingers to spread the load and the first mistake many people make is elbows out like this so in a traditional push-up that you do in the in the gym you'd be elbows to the side which is strengthening the pecs we're not interested in that in in this position position we're interested in strengthening the triceps and the back which is chaturanga so we want our inner elbows that's where you have your injections the blue veiny bits most of us move forward so you feel push down through the hands and move the elbows forwards. We do this in cat cow, all sorts of things where we're balancing our arms, maybe crow as well. And that immediately strengthens through the shoulders. When the elbows are out, it's quite weak. When the elbows are backwards, inner elbows forwards, we feel quite strong through our shoulder girdle. Okay, and then there's only one way the elbows can go, which is back. So that helps as well. Okay, so we're gonna start with that arm position and start in a tabletop position. What often people do is they think all about the arms and the arm strength. In a plank, when we start in a plank position, you want to think as equally about the feet, the legs and the core as you do your arms. Because the arms are generally the weakest part in many of us to start with. So we want to push back. You want to not have your bum too high. What's more common is people dip down in a plank like this through their back because they're not strong in the core. So you want to think about can I do a plank? If you can't plank, we want to take the knees down. I'll show you that in a minute. But otherwise, we're going to come into a straight line in our body. And to do that, we're not tipping our bum up, we're tipping our bum down. So our pelvis moves down, tailbone moves towards the heels. And then really think about strengthening through your legs. So push back through your heels, strong through the thighs. If you let go of the legs, they're going to, you're going to have all the weight in your arms. So use your legs to be as strong as your arms push through the arms so you're really strong through the shoulders then squeeze your belly in so it's really hard work this is hard stay here do this for a while train this at home and you'll soon start to build some strength in the body from there if that's okay for you you might be able to bend your arms and take yourself down to chaturanga so we come from here strong through the legs 
bend your arms back, take your elbows and your shoulders in line if you can and hover. This is tough, this is chaturanga, this is the actual pose. Come all the way to the floor if you need to. So you could try that, you could see how you get on. What's really common in chaturanga I see, common mistakes, which you know, if you do them once or twice, it's not gonna hurt you, but it's not gonna build strength and you might not be doing your bodies any favor long term. But this is quite common, which is people go and come down like this. Again, you're just bending your back. You're not gonna really build much strength in the arms from doing that. Um, as long as you do it carefully, you know, you're probably not gonna hurt your back. You just gotta be careful. You might do. Um, the other um, thing I see people do is this. They collapse in their shoulders and they come down like this. Again, a couple of times, not good. But if you keep doing that, you're putting a lot of pressure on the front of your shoulder girdle and you won't be building the strength that we need. So think about keeping everything in a straight line. <laughs> and that's the hard bit. If that's not possible, which for many of us, especially when you start yoga, it's not gonna happen straight away. Take your knees down. It's not a problem, it's not a, a, it's not, not a lesser pose. It'll just get you to where you wanna be um, more safely and more enjoyably. So we come from plank, we drop the knees, keeping the inner elbows forwards, and then we lower down. So you're still using the same muscles, you'll still feel here, 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 but you're not flopping down, you've, you've got some control. Same thing applies again, so you've got the knees down, you could come here, could come all the way to the floor, either come into a cobra, elbows still in, shoulders in, or straighten the arms, come into up dog. That's a separate tutorial, I'll do that another day. Okay, so don't think that that's a lesser pose. What, I have a lot of people, they come, and after you've been in a class and there's lots of different flows, lots of different chaturangas, you start to be really tired, especially when you're still building strength. Better to do, maybe you do a few of these, these ones, chaturangas, and maybe then I'm getting a bit tired, so I skip them. I come into child's pose for a little bit, or I do a few like this until I've got a bit of strength back. Not a problem either way. Your teacher will never think you're doing a lesser pose. They shouldn't do. So always listen to your body when you're exhausted rather than just flopping into something with bad technique, which is actually worse. The body won't do you any favors. You'll be tired tomorrow. Your body will be aching. You won't be able to do as much. Always think of your yoga practice as something that's supposed to make your body feel good so you can go about your daily life with more happiness and uh, community and enjoy your life. So it's healthy body, healthy mind. Not something that you should be aching and striving and forcing and straining. The body um, doesn't respond to that anyway. So, any other top tips? Um, again, yeah, just be careful of the shoulders. Try not to dip down. If you're quite tight in the shoulder, in the front of the shoulder, which many of us are because we spend too long on computers in our day job or everything's forward, we drive in, children, cooking, gardening, whatever it is, forwards. So this can commonly happen in Chaturanga is that you, your shoulder, you sort of cave in a little bit and you kind of come down because you're so tight in the shoulders. What you're trying to do is keep your shoulders open. So your shoulders down your back, strong through the body. Again, if you drop the knees, fine. And you're keeping that nice and open. If that's not possible, again, we just do our best. Shoulders back, knees down, and lower. Okay, so any other questions on Chaturanga, then please do message me or put them in the comments. Always happy to help. I know some people really like to have a personal session to go through some of these more tricky poses so I can look at you and help you to work out the best version for you, how you're gonna progress in your physical practice or build strength. Um, so again, just give me a message if you want to. I'll see you in class soon. Namaste.